uh, allowed us to discover a flaw, a problem in the date processing system in GBIF. It was moving or shifting interpreted dates from one day to backwards about 15 days. And that was because of the geometry of this, of this plot. So colors can actually help you discover information. And that's also very useful in plots. <coughs> hmm? Even more, colors can be used to indicate association, to indicate groupings. You group things by color. And the eye is trained, or is probably instinctively trained, to associate things that are alike. And color is a powerful likeness tool. So again, let's, let's go back to already seen uh, uh, plots here. And remember this uh, tree map here. You, instinct, you instantly associate the colors to concepts and different shades of a color to the same concept. concept. So your instinct tells you that all these are plants, even if you don't need to read the headings, because all these are shades of gray. So basically, they belong to the same group. And this plot was designed like this. And these shades of blue and purple are also designed to convey a sense of belonging. In this case, animals. What's more, all the vertebrates are in purples, and all the arthropods are in blues. So color helps you mentally grouping things and are quite useful for that. At the same time, colors can help you separate things. Colors can help you separate something which is two mixed together. Remember our previous chronogram like this? This is made of contributions of many data sets. We can use colors to separate those data sets. For instance, in this plot here, uh, which is not rendering very well because there is too, a lot of light here, but that plot has been <laughs> split along the z-axis, and those different colors belong to different providers. So you can visually see who is the worst offender, the one that had those uh, spiral lines that we were looking for. So colors can convey a lot of information. We see that colors can grab things together and classify things, yeah, as in the previous case or example. We can see that colors can help you separate things, and colors can help you associate things, and even give a sense of, of, of gradient. Uh, I am going to show you this plot, which has nothing to do with biodiversity, but uh, this is one of my my daughter's paper, and she's a medical doctor. Well, she's becoming a medical doctor. <laughs> but her first, her very first paper, which we spent about a month trying to write on, on her research, produced finally this association plot in which you can see that, uh, well, this is the number of cases in, of a particular disease that have been found in the literature associated to certain uh, problems, stomach problems, lung problems, etc. And we found uh, well, we used a, a statistical analytical technique to associate the papers by the symptoms. So a very badly known disease, this one. So we discovered this enormous association here and this uh, uh, smaller association here. And colors here are used to connect body systems. So you can actually see which body systems are most associated by looking at how colors blend from each other. So there are times where colors are simply necessary, but those won't be all the instances in all the times in which you have to publish something. A little bit back to color, to very basic colors. You, know, you all know what basic colors are, right? How many basic colors or how many primary colors there are, are there? Well, it's been debated because it depends on which system of colors you're using. There are three primary colors in the RGB system, which is the system that your screen uses, and additive systems. Those are blue, red, and we are looking at screens, and green is our third prim primary color for screens. But any painter out there will say, nay, 
primary colors are blue, red, and yellow, because those are that can be mixed in an in yeah. But those are the ones that can be mixed in a subtractive system. So in the graphical arts, they you often talk about four or even five primary colors. In RGB system, they have to add white and green in black because it's actually a centuries old lie that you can produce any color with a combination of three. That's not true. There are many shades that you cannot, you cannot get with only this combination of three colors in the subtractive world, in when you paint by reflection. Okay? It's different with <coughs> addition. So most systems will use four or even five primary colors. They will use add uh, black and, 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 and white. And, but we might th better probably think in terms of uh, basic colors, which are the ones that I put here, even though orange and cyan and violet are considered always secondary colors. But those, were, those are the most basic colors that render best in a screen, although not necessarily render best on a paper. Those are colors which are very easy to get because they actually get an, uh, a complete bit for each component, okay? full bit, full bit, no bit for yellow, for instance, or just half a bit for on one of the components, so they are quite easy to render. <coughs> but in the uh, uh, cyan, cyan, magenta, uh, uh, yellow system, which is the system that is used for subtractive colors, for using inks, okay? then Everything is a combination of these three plus black and white. Now, colors have a feeling. So your choice of colors will largely depend on what you want to explain. <coughs> and often it's convenient to use or to know how human beings react to color. Because colors have been, in, for the, our entire lives, been associated to some kind of intrinsic meaning or feel. For instance, we are all used to consider this ramp here as warm colors. The color of fire, the color of light. Whereas these ones here are basically cold colors. In any, anywhere you have to use a color ramp, you normally will assume, and that's it, it, it will be true, that warm colors will indicate whatever more a high level of whatever, colors, uh, uh, or better. Warm color, better, more. Cold color, worse, bad, less, lower. That's natural. We've been seeing like that, uh, that almost our lives. So we shouldn't make the mistake of reversing, for instance, uh, uh, a color one because it looks pretty. Even though you can put the, the caption and explain exactly what it means, what this color means, and what this other color means, it's always better to stick to what's commonly understood or commonly accepted. Those are neutral colors in which they, they, that don't normally convey information in the same sense. But those neutral colors are quite useful when you are working on color on white, such as in a paper. In the paper, the natural colors render, render generally better than the primary colors, which render better, render better on a black back, uh, background. And those, this palette of colors here is basically equivalent, and it's called the natural system, that um, tries to convey information equally across all colors with the maximum discrimination between colors. As you can imagine, this should be seen on a white paper by reflecting light. It shouldn't be seen as it is now here projected. Hmm? So do they look better here than the previous, sorry, the previous colors? No, those, one, those ones here look brighter, right? Because of the black background and because they are light, projected light. But in fact, if you are looking at colors from reflected light, these colors here will probably render better and contrast more with the white background. <coughs> Sometimes colors in carry on an intrinsic meaning or cultural meaning. 
which of which well not often but sometimes we can be forced to use even though they can be actually ugly really ugly and universal meaning is the traffic light system the traffic light system green yellow red is universally associated to good mild bad so red thing is caution be careful stop high cost the green thing is okay you're done uh, you're on the, way, on the right track that's uh, not costly whatever and yeah, there, there are some circumstances in, we, in which you ha can be required. I was required to use this horrible color system in a paper, but you might agree with me that this combination is horrid. Why is it horrid? Because green, green and red are complementary colors and should be never put together. They hurt the eye. <coughs> they really hurt the eye. Besides, any colorblind person will, no, will not distinguish them. So avoid using greens, pure greens and pure reds on the same paper, unless on the same page or, or the same plot, unless you separate them somehow. If you separate them, that's okay, so, or more or less okay. As you know, there are two basic systems of colors. The additive system, in which the most common one is the uh, green, red and blue, that works by adding, wave, uh, but adding lights, adding wavelengths, and the substructive colors, which is used in papers, in which the color you see is the one that has not been absorbed by the surface, which is called the SMYK, because K is the fourth color, is the black, uh, otherwise you can get a uh, proper black uh, system. When thinking about publishing anything, forget completely about RGB. If you do anything in RGB space, it will never render exactly like that on paper it will render differently. So whenever you have to prepare a plot or whatever for publication, try to use a SMI, SMYK system that will mimic better what you, what you will see in paper. Even, it won't be perfect because printers have uh, different ways to translate what you see on the screen into paper, but probably it will render it better. This is more or less done automatically by current, by any kind of graphics program, even uh, PowerPoint can do it, <coughs> no problem. Remember that colors are there, colors are essentially combinations of wavelengths, but we can only, only see a number of them and we can only reproduce a number of them. The amount of colors that we can reproduce as compared with the full spectrum of spectral colors is called the gamut. And the gamut is often quite small as compared to the all spectrum of possible colors. This is a gamut for a printer in which uh, it's a little bit complex, but basically what you see is a conical projection along a, a, in a 3D space, in a 3D color space. And those are spectral colors around the border that corresponds to these wavelengths. Uh, this is the uh, 590 nanometers wavelength, and this is the 500. And these triangles here represent what colors can be seen in a particular device or printed by a particular printer. Often, screens, projectors, will be represented by a triangle, which means that they can represent any color within this spectrum, but not outside it. Hmm? If you are really worried about color and you really need to to render a course accurately. You will have to get from your printer or, your, or, or the graphic designer who's doing it or from the editor or whatever, the gamut of the printer they are going to use. <coughs> okay, now let's uh, make it fast with a few rules, which are not mine, which are uh, done by uh, few, in fact, Stephen Few although I have modified them heavily and, and added a few ones and adapted some others to our context. This is a very interesting, very short, but very interesting manual that you can download and 